As a nine-year-old, she dreamed of crossing the country on horseback. Decades later, she fulfilled her dream. Now in her late 70s, Lou Allwood is sharing her six-month journey, taken at a time when women weren't expected to take on such a challenge. Leaving camp at 9 o'clock, it's sunny but cold. There's a strong north wind, and I suppose it's going to rain today. Lou Elwood is reading from a diary written 50 years ago when she crossed Canada on horseback. It was a bucket list item before many of us had ever heard of a bucket list. When I was nine years old, Mom said that uh, she used to worry because I'd sit down and I'd actually go over this map a lot. And it was what a cross Canada type and I'd mark the route I was going to take on horseback. And I'd never let it go. I when Lou Elwood turned 28, the timing was right for her to begin her six-month journey. But it came with a catch. Never rode a horse in our life before. I've got on a Shetland pony that used to bite a few times, got thrown. That's about it. I never really rode a horse in our life. And this is how much I knew about horses. I phoned up a lady. Clint Knights told us this lady selling horses. And she said, uh, uh, what kind of a horse do you want? I said, well... I don't want a Shetland pony, and I don't want a plow horse, but a brown one will do. Both Elwood and her riding partner set off April 21st, 1965, and arrived in Halifax October 22nd. We slept outdoors 11 nights, and except we stopped at the Sault Ste. Marie. It's all in the book. We stopped at the Sault Ste. Marie for three weeks to rest the horses, get them rejawed, got a job, got some extra money, and, but only 11 nights we slept indoors. The rest was out in the bush. One of the many challenges they faced was the female stereotype. In the mid-60s, society didn't believe a woman would complete the crossing. But on the third day, we quit because we were so windburned and chapped. We, and there was ticks. We cut off our hair real short. We were windburned. So a lot of people, until it hit the newspaper. Once it hit the newspaper, I found that they'd say things like daring dames instead of young women and things like that. It was very, quite a bit, if you see some of the clippings from some of the newspapers, yeah, they didn't talk about women the same back then as, with, as they do now. There were many days when they felt like quitting, but when they did, they always found someone who would convince them to complete the trip. I would never trade it for nothing. The bruises, the concussions, the, I wouldn't have traded it for anything. The learning to ride, the hardships. Now at 79, Elwood is planning on retracing her cross-country trip by car. She hopes to renew friendships with those who supported her a half century ago and thanking them with her book about her cross-country dream. Dave Branco, CKPG News.